and gentlemen, Casey Johnson is doing the recording on this video. say to you right now, if there's ever been a day that America needs prayer, that day is on our doorstep. We are here. Amen. So we thank you for coming. We've had the privilege of doing this for a number of years now. And I just thank you for coming out today, taking the time uh, to be here. Let me introduce some of the people that are going to be our participants today, and then we'll kick it right off. Uh, first of all, though, Jeff Hales, who represents the Gideons, he'll be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance here in a few moments. And then our Sheriff, Anderson County Sheriff, Chad McBride is here. And uh, he's going to be praying about the crime issue in America. And then Brother Brent Wallace, pastor over at Taylor Memorial uh, Church, he's going to be praying about the abortion issue. And thank God it does look like the Supreme Court might be showing a little favor our way. Can we get an amen? And then we've got a Vietnam veteran, Brother Philip McRoby. He's going to pray for the military and for the, uh, of course, the issue in Ukraine and Russia. We don't know where that may lead. And then we've got Pastor Johnny Donald. He's going to pray for the family. I've said this, if the devil had a bullseye on the target, it would certainly be the family in this day and age. And then uh, we got a retired South Carolina Highway Patrolman. He was going to pray for our brother Dean Bowen. He's going to be praying for the safety of our officers. And then Sister Elva of Martin. Uh, she's going to come around, uh, talk to us, pray a little bit about spiritual warfare. 
Then we're going to come back. I'm going to try to lead us and I hope everybody will join us in prayer as we pray for some leadership in the, uh, Washington, D.C. So again, thank you for coming. So let's get things started right now, and we'll just follow one by one to keep it going. And I got to tell you up all morning. We'll start, Brother Jeff. Come on around. I'm going to ask you to stand, and we all gonna uh, uh, honor of the flag. And Jeff's going to lead us in. To the flag of the United States of America. Father, I wish to send one nation, only God, and beautiful for lifting and just for all. Then we're going to get Brother Steve Snellbrook coming around and sing for us today, and then we'll start our prayer. I stand on a mountain in North Carolina and look at the place I love to call home. Proud of the freedom we all have been given by the sacrifice of heroes we know.
uh, crime in our community and our nation. And uh, I've been in law enforcement now for 21 years. And it's just amazing, uh, and not in a good way amazing, just to see how things have shifted. And uh, being in law enforcement 21 years ago, basically 20 years ago, what was right 20 years ago is wrong now. What was wrong yeah. 20 years ago is wrong. And the way uh, the judicial system, which is ironic that we're sitting in front of here in our work I mean, but anyway, and how it has just become such a pro criminal system. Yeah. Meanwhile, the law enforcement officers are out here every single day, literally putting their lives on the line. And 20 years ago, you would have a situation where you may have to fight somebody. Uh, I developed a whole very quickly, you had to just back then when that five or six deputies per shift for this county. And so you had to learn how to be diplomatic real quick and try to talk to people into the back of the control bar. And uh, that's not so hard, but you have to learn uh, for survival. Uh, and you, you would get you'd have to fight somebody. It just it was inevitable that it would take place and, and uh, it was once in a while. And now it's every day. So every single day I hear the tones on our radios go off, and uh, sometimes it's you know, on the other side of the county or not very close, so I can get to them. But the tones go off every day because we have an officer having to fight somebody. And uh, I just, I, I, I can't believe we're at that place in the world. And that's not just here, that's nationwide. Uh, it's just people are losing their minds. Uh, I know COVID had a large impact on mental health and stuff like that. But uh, just seeing the, the pure evil that's out there, you just right. you see just the tip of the iceberg on the news. But to get into the room with people that have molested a child uh, or have killed a loved one or a neighbor or something, and just you know, uh, you can tell the devil's just taking over. Yeah. And uh, so, so today, uh, I'd ask that you, I'm gonna pray, and ask that you would. Pray with me because we we need some, you know, we're we're in some serious spiritual warfare right now. Yes. And the only way hearts are going to change is if Jesus changes those hearts. Yes. And we can't be naive to think. We can't be naive to think. Now he he's like he's powerful. He can do it all on his own. Lord, help us to, to pray 
and be willing to pray openly and to set that standard in our community. The Lord, help that to be the standard in this country again. President Truman, President Truman declared that our national motto in 1955 was in God we trust. Lord, we need to get back to that. Lord, I pray that you help us get, we are willing to get back to it. Help us. Give us the tools we need to get back to it. Yeah. Lord, bring us together as a community. Keep us together as a community. Help us to know that our mission in life is the gospel yeah. and to serve you. Yeah. And help us always for that to be the number one mission that we have and all else is secondary. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for blessing so much as you already have. And uh, just, just help us to uh, give us that courage that we need to get through uh, the tough times that we're in, Lord. Because we, we know it's going to get better. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Isn't it good to hear from a Christian share? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. The sheriff that will talk to us about Jesus That's right. and that Jesus can fix the problem. Amen. 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 Yep. All we're doing is dealing with symptoms. Yes. That's right. And uh, but Jesus can fix the problem. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm here today to speak for just a moment on the evil, and you heard me right, the evil of abortion. And uh, e uh, abortion is an evil. Uh, since 1973, it's cost the lives of millions, millions yes. of innocent, unborn babies. And everyone that's been involved have committed a horrible crime against God and against these innocent ones. Yes. I thought about what the Bible says. Uh, people often ask the question, well, where does life begin? Well, if you read the Bible, uh, the Bible is very clear that life begins at conception in the womb of a mother. Listen to what the psalmist said, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Amen. I want you to pray with me today and let's pray over this evil atrocity in our nation called abortion. Yes. Our Father in heaven, we thank you today that we have this privilege to be here and to be able to come together as collectively as a as born again believers to call out yes. on the name of Jesus yes. and Lord Jesus as we stand here and we think about the subject that we've been given uh, of abortion and what it is doing in our nation God I feel like the prophet Isaiah who said I'm a man of unclean lips yes. and I'm dwelling among a people of unclean lips today uh, I'm here God asking you to forgive us Forgive us of this sin. Forgive us, Lord. And God, we know like the prophet Habakkuk again when he prayed. And he prayed and said, God, in your judgment, remember mercy. And so today, Lord, we're calling on the God of mercy. Lord Jesus, be gracious with us. Forgive us, O oh God, as we stand in the gap on behalf of all of these today. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would forgive us of this sin God and Lord God we're praying that you will help our people the people of our nation and the leaders of our nation oh God to recognize that abortion promotes killing and it devalues life and Lord I pray that you will help us to understand the day that life does begin at conception and that all life is a gift from Almighty yeah. God himself. Hallelujah. And God, I pray that we as Christians will continue to take the stand that you stand for and stand against this evil that's in our land. And we're asking and we're believing that the abortion mills and the abortion factories among our nation and in our own community will close in the name of Jesus. And God, that this will be stopped in Jesus' name. And God, that every demon in hell that has that has, has raged its attack in this way will be brought to halt. And it will stop in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. I pray, God, uh, that you would 
help us to repent as a nation. Yes. And God, help us to turn to you and turn to Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. And God, one day we will be judged. We will be judged as a country and as a nation. And again, Lord, I pray, remember mercy in your judgment. Thank you, Jesus. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Let me say today it's an honor and a privilege to be speaking to you today on a national day of prayer. Love to the microphone. And I know for a fact that I'm blessed, and I know each and every one of you are blessed. It's blessed uh, beyond measure. And the reason I know that is because we live in the greatest nation on the face of the earth, the good old USA. And Lord, uh, we're just so privileged to be in this country. And then on top of that, Lord, I want to just say that our country's in bad shape. You know that. You know about our leaders. We don't have any leaders. Amen. Okay? That's the problem. Uh, you know that uh, uh, God's word tells us the solution to our problem. That's right. And we just need to be in God's word. And uh, you go to Second Chronicles chapter seven and verse fourteen. Uh, God uh, Himself says. The way to heal our nation is for us. Let me get to the scripture right quick. Most of you, most of you know about it already, probably. <laughs> okay. God said, "If my people, which are called by my name, yes. will humble themselves." and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will hear and will forgive their sins and will heal their land now that's the solution to the problem we're in all we have to do is obey God we need to offer up this prayer not only today but every day from here on out to the second coming of our Lord. I believe if we do that as Christians, sincerely humble ourselves and earnestly uh, seek, give this prayer up every day, I believe God will heal our land. He said He would, and I believe He'll do that. He's never, He's never reneged on any promise He ever did say in this Word of God. We are most blessed. We certainly are. And one thing that I want to share with you is when I went into the military, I had to take an oath right. before I could even serve in the military. And that oath was that I would defend and protect the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so we have domestic problems. Yeah. In this nation today, we uh, we need to just keep our prayers and our mind and our, saw, our sight and our efforts on our Lord and Savior. Because he said he would heal our nation if we would just humble ourselves Amen. and pray. And I believe that with all my heart. Right. Also, I want to share with you that, that uh, the people in Ukraine have suffered a lot. Yes. And it's amazing that civilians can come out, and we know God is with them because they can fight the Russian army, and they're not able to take everything like they thought they were going to take. And most of all, we know God is in this. And I just want to offer up a, a, a prayer for all those uh, in the service, the military, that are serving uh, men and women here in America and overseas. So let us bow for prayer with them. 
Alright, Lord, we just pray for all the men and women in uniform today that serve our country, serve here, and serve in other foreign countries. We ask your protection upon them, Lord, as they seek to keep the freedom that we value so dear in this country. And Lord, we just pray that you be continue to protect them in a mighty way. And Lord, we pray for the, uh, the country of Ukraine. Lord, it's, it's in shambles, and Lord, we, we don't know how it's going to be fixed, but Lord, we, we just lift up the uh, civilian population there. They've given up so much. You know, they, they really have a desire for their country. It's, it's horrible to see it to be destroyed like it is. But we know you can, you can reconcile it and you can bring it back. But most of all, Lord, we know that we need to keep our eyes and our faith and our commitment on you. The great I am yeah. who you are and you will always be. Lord, just forgive us of our sins like you said. And heal our nation, Lord, and we'll just continue to do pray every day from this day forward. That prayer you ask us to pray, Lord. We will do that as a commitment to you and your people. Thank you again for loving us so much and for being so great and gracious and 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 caring for America. We know she can be a great nation again with your power and your will. Thank you again, Lord Jesus. Amen. Good afternoon. At this time, we're going to ready ourselves to pray for the families. Glory to God, not just Christian families, but families at large, because according to the Word of God, God is the creative order and discipline area for the family structure, according to Genesis. And in Ephesians, it talks about the, the family of God. So we, the brothers and sisters in Christ, let us just bow right now and pray a prayer of thanksgiving and then go to the family dynamic. Father, we first and foremost say thank you for who you are in our lives. Yes. You are the one that set the tone, the metronome. You are the one that sets the environment for the family dynamic. And we thank you for the integrity of the word of God that shows yes. us who we are yes. in context yes. of humanity. Glory to God. We thank you for breathing breath in the first man, Adam, that you brought into the earth and caused him to become a living soul. And out of him came his wife and his children. So we thank you that the families will return when men, glory to God, turn to the integrity of the word of God and see that you have an alignment with humanity because your son prayed in uh, Matthew 6, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, we know what your yes. will is in the earth, that we would look just like heaven on earth right now. Glory to God. And men are governed by the sanctity of the word of God. Men, glory to God, have a vision and purpose for their families. Men have a vision and purpose for themselves, therefore they do have it for their families. We pray, Father, that the Christians all throughout this land and country, glory to God, that we will stand firm in our faith, yes. that we will not be ashamed, oh, hallelujah, that we yes. will love all individuals, but stand firm in our faith, as Jude said, we contend for the faith, oh, not allowing yeah, immoral oh, values oh. to come in and creep in and destroy our corrupt and corrupt our communication. Yes. We thank you, first and foremost, for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Thank you right now for families that have a model as they look at Christians. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As they look at us according to what your son said, we are a light. We cannot be hid. We are a city. We cannot be ignored. Glory to God. So as they look at us, they will see the integrity of your word being personified in the human sanctity of families. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, as we stand. We notice your will. Hallelujah. That those that have made alternate dynamics of families, mm, your will shall be done through yeah. us, in us, yeah. and with us. Right. We will be the representatives that you put in the earth be the ambassadors that you called us to be. We thank you for husbands loving their wives, wives loving and honoring their, 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 their husbands and children be able to honor and respect their parents because of the integrity of the word of God. We will not grieve and forgive us for all the things that we've caused to allow the family dynamic to be really just messed up, Father. Glory to God. But we return, as my fellow brother said, 
we humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you will be exalted in the earth through the family dynamic. And when the family returns to the earth <laughs> in the integrity of the word of God, then we will see humanity and all the ills and maladies in our society be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for not just hearing us. We thank you for honoring what we said. And most of all, we thank you for answering what we said. Because we will be the ambassadors that you called us to be in the earth for the family dynamic. And everyone that agrees with that, say amen. Amen. Saluda County came to me and he told me, he said, um, you don't realize it, but you're a minister of God. Amen. And he said, there's scriptures about it. And I'm going to read just a couple Amen. of those scriptures this morning. But he told me, he said, you'll reach people that will never darken the church door. That's right. And uh, so that's what I did. And, and I just asked God to guide me if he wanted me to witness to someone he did. But I didn't go out preaching to people. But I prayed and I seen God do a lot of great mighty things and to Him be the glory. Amen. One of those is, and I'm gonna have I wrote these down last night on paper, even though I got the Bible in front of me, my eyesight's not like it used to be. So I wrote it down so I could kind of draw uh, one line to it. So I could so I could uh, read this to you. Uh, and first of all, I don't know if my Aunt Joyce is here or not, but uh, I told her why uh, my name is Rufus Dean Bowen. But she likes the Rufus part, but everybody else knows me as Dean. So if she's here, hey Joyce, I put my grandfather's name in front there. It says, uh, I said, good morning. This is Rufus Dean Bowen. I have been asked to speak to you, and it is a pleasure that I am retired law enforcement. The Bible scriptures that I have here are from Romans uh, chapter 19. It says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, everyone resists the authority. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For ruthless, for rulers are not a terror to God, good, but but to evil. Do you want to be unfair or do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Like I said, I left the glasses, so just bear with me. Do what is good, and your good your good will pray, be praised from the same. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who participates you. Practice is evil. I last night I sat up for a good while and I said, God, give me give me the words to say in this prayer that would be bring honor to you. If you will, I'll just ask you to bow your heads at this point. Right. Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of our brave men and women in law enforcement. Yes. Father, there are many Protect different types of agencies all with the same goal of protecting yes. our citizens yes. and our great nation. Without them, we will live in total anarchy. Our nation has been in great, great decline for much needed support of our officers in the, in the past few years. Father, even our own government has failed our men and women with moral support. God, a lot of our elected officials have failed, failed the American people by centering, by catering to those who are willing to destroy what this great nation has was founded upon. Right. Heavenly Father, one Heavenly Father, our country is deeply divided. We are no longer one nation under God. 
we are simply America. Father, we ask that you will bless our men and women who wear the respective uniform and their families while they are on duty. Put a hedge of protection around them while they are while they are what while they are your will will each while they do your will each and every day. In Jesus' mighty name we ask this. Amen. Amen. up to my mouth <laughs> so even the devil can hear it okay yeah. Yeah. not only he has no teeth he's dead off the time right <laughs> Jesus took it off as I was praying about what God wanted me to share this is going to be very different from what I usually do when I pray that these events have been doing this for about 15 20 years but uh, God spoke to me um, that we were in the second Chronicles 20 Kairos time remember the story of second Chronicles 20 when the, the um, Moabites and the Ammonites came against uh, uh, Jehoshaphat in the kingdom. And uh, he was he was fighting. There was a vast multitude that had come. And um, and they cried out to God, you know. And, and God said, hey, <laughs> you're, you can stand still. You're not going to have to fight this battle. I don't know why God oh, say that today. Wow. <laughs> okay. He's, God told him, if, 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 position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He is with you. And, and so in the morning, Jehoshaphat got up that next morning, and instead of, you know, getting the army to battle, he called forth singers, yeah. singers, to sing and praise God. And he said, believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe in his promise, and you will succeed. And then he had them start singing. And, when, and the Bible says that the moment, everybody say the moment. Because oh. we're going to have a moment here in just a minute. The moment they began their shouts and praises, the Lord set an ambush against the Canaanites, the Moabites, and they helped destroy each other. Okay, now, one word about the abortion. Abortion should be listed as a weapon of mass destruction. 63 million innocent Americans have been murdered. Lot millions more than any have been killed in all the wars our nation has ever fought. So we're getting ready. 25 years ago, I stood on those steps right over there. We didn't have this nice podium. And I had a group of SWAT team prayer warriors with me, <laughs> secret weapons and tactics, except I've changed it to spiritual weapons and tactics. And, and we did a prophetic act right here. We were at the new club. Sheriff Gene Taylor was on our side, okay? First boss. <laughs> what? That's my first boss. Your first boss, okay. And uh, we, we did a prophetic act right here 25 years ago. And God spoke all this to me when I was praying about what are we to do? What, am I, what kind of prayer do I lead in today? And he just brought all this back in my mind. But we did these prophetic acts here. We went to every spot in the, we had researched the history of Anderson County. Uh, we were going to break the spiritual forces. We went to every spot in this county where there had been uh, Satan worship yeah. and all yeah. kind of mess like that. And, the, and, and we sang. We just pulled into those sites and we sang the hymns of God. Amen. And then we went to the new club itself on 28, which was right beside the you little babies that weren't here then. Uh, it was right beside the old Ryan's on 28. And we pulled in that parking lot. And this was all at 10 o'clock. Of course, nobody was there. The, you know, the bad guys worked hard at night. <laughs> the dancers and all that mess. But anyway, we sang and we just declared, this is going. This new club has to go. Well, it's gone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This, that yeah. Yeah. We did this prophetic act at 10 a.m. right here. And all the sites that we went and prayed and found the demon spirits had been released for Satan worship in this county. And uh, at 10 o'clock that night, Sheriff Gene Taylor, were you there when this was happening? Like four years later. I four years later, okay. Um, I remember this. You remember, okay. See, this is Paul Hart's rest of the story. Okay, uh, you know, the newspaper didn't report the prophetic act. But at 10 o'clock that night, Sheriff Gene, Gene Taylor found a little technicality that he could use to shut down the new club. And, of course, on Sunday morning's paper said, oh, we'll be back open by Monday morning. We just need to get some 
some <laughs> nurses oh, thought it's, uh, they had to have a, a certificate, a health certificate for the dancers. They said, we'll be up by Monday. They would never open again. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. the spirit round is one on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Right. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to do a prophetic Second Chronicles 20 prophetic act. I'm going to ask you to stand. And we are going to sing and praise God. And I've asked my <laughs> Steve to come up here. And uh, we're going to sing one you all know. And then I'm going to have a brief prayer at the end. But we're singing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Okay. Grace, how sweet the sound. portion of goods that falleth unto me. You know, isn't it amazing how much you learn from the time you're about 17 to the time you're about 30? Can I get an amen? That young man thought he knew everything and he went and said, give it to me. I had better sense than to go to my daddy and say, give it to me. Because he would have given me a good portion of it. But let me say, the daddy divided his portion of goods with him and he went to a faraway country and he wasted his substance on harlots and booze and everything else. Going to the club, sister. All that kind of thing. Finally, he got rock bottom. 
And after he got rock bottom down in that hog pen, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came his way and woke him up. That's what America needs uh, to be awakened by the Holy Ghost. There in that hog pen, he said, I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. When he got back, the father blessed him. Now you say, what's that got to do with the National Day of Prayer? I believe that America has become a prodigal nation. I believe this nation started under the direct leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. You read in that Magna Carta, those original documents and the Mayflower Compact on the pilgrims that came over. They were going to establish a nation. And it says this, uh, for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The liberal educators don't even teach uh, that anymore because it mentions Jesus. And let me tell you, we've raised uh, a generation of heathen. And America has gotten away from its upbringing. America has gotten away from everything that once made America great. How many of you went to a public school in the 50s and the 60s and started every morning in prayer and somebody reading from the Word of God? Man, that's a far cry now. And America has hit rock bottom. Talk to the sheriff. Talk to some of our veterans. Talk to the pastors and the law enforcement. America has become a wicked society. And here's the thing. Like that prodigal son, we need to hit rock bottom. Well, we're just about there. Somebody give me an amen. We're just about rock bottom. I'm predicting one of two things are going to happen. Either America's going to fall completely apart or we're about to have a revival. I would choose the revival. Let's pray that America's hit rock bottom like the prodigal son in the hog pen. Let us look up and realize where our blessings came from. Let's pray. Our Father God, thank you today for the privilege uh, of gathering together on this National Day of Prayer. And Lord, as uh, these uh, great people behind me have prayed today, I pray that all over this state, all over Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, California, Michigan, and New York, and yes, even in Washington, D.C., see. I'm praying, God, that there'll be people unite their hearts, uh, their minds, and their souls together in a time and a season of prayer and make a huge difference uh, and make an impact in this nation of ours. And Father, if it be your will, let us rise up out of the hog pen of sin and homosexuality and liberalism and all the transgender foolishness and the ungodliness that has destroyed uh, the fabric of American society. Let us rise up from the hog pen of filth as the prodigal son did and make a beeline back to the Father and America have revival. I just pray God for our leaders. I pray God for those in Washington. I pray for the president. I pray God for the Senate. I pray for the Congress people. I pray God for the Supreme Court. I pray God for the governors. I pray God for the state representatives, for the mayors. I pray God for every person in leadership, our sheriff, and God that all of us might recognize that we all need the Lord. And I pray God that the wind of the Holy Spirit breathe upon America yet one more time and give us God another opportunity if it be your will in these last days. We thank you God for what you've done. We thank you God for what you're now doing. And God, we're going to thank you by faith for what we believe you're still going to do yet. Have your will and way. And may God you uh, be glorified in everything we do. 
We pray it, Father, in Jesus. In Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you for coming. Amen. And they keep praying even though the National Day of Prayer is behind.